what's going on everybody it's your boy db4 here welcome to romance of the three kingdoms 13 we live we lit now romance of the three kingdoms 13 is a historically based it's based on a the three kingdoms era of china and what i like about it so much it reminds me of the war in states era so with this playthrough we're gonna be playing the Quinn faction, or the Quinn faction, however you pronounce it. I'm gonna butcher a lot of these names, but yeah, it reminds me a lot of the show Kingdom. Now, if you're fans of the show or the anime Kingdom and the manga, you would know what I'm talking about. It's excellent, you should check it out. But if you're a fan of History of China, period, this game is definitely a game you should be checking out. Now, before we even get into the start of the game, let's get into the edit characters because i'm going to be doing something different with this playthrough with this playthrough we're going to be using original officers now in this game they allow you to create your own original officers and i've decided to partially remake the ken dynasty from the warring states era that the first dynasty to unify china that's what the whole anime is based on so let's get right to it first and foremost we have the king our boy yang this is the guy who unified China, our boy Ying here, as you can see. Now, the way I did this, this game allows you to create about a hundred and something characters. You can max out all their stats and just make them all crazy. So, so I won't just end up running through the game and making it real whack. I put some limiters on myself. Now, for the main characters of the Quinn Dynasty... I'm going to keep calling it Quinn Dynasty when it's Ken Dynasty, I know. But the main characters of this playthrough or from the anime that I created is your boy Chang Ping, the minister on the right. Then we got your boy Chang Wen, the minister on the, on the left. Then we got your boy Chang Zhao, that's the king's little brother. We got your boy Heki. We got your boy Huan Yi. You know who that is. I think, yeah, this is Kanki. Then we got Li Shin, our boy. Now, most of these characters, now, the way I did it, you're allowed to max out the characters. But for most of the main characters, I gave them a... The way this works is, when you do your stats, you start with a base of 200 stats. You can max it out or put everything to zero or everything to 100, no matter what you do. But the way I did it is, with these four stats, I basically said the main characters get a maximum of about 300. The smaller characters, you know, the, the sub-characters, or the characters that play a smaller role, they get a maximum of about 280 points. Then I have a couple of wild card characters. I'm going to get to them in a minute. That I gave them a maximum of about 340 no, 360 points. That makes them total monsters. They can compete with the best people in this game. And I'm thinking about making them random characters. But we're going to get to that. Let's just finish going through the characters. We got Heki. We got our boy. Kanki. We got Li Shin. Our boy Rishin. He just got his name in the manga if you follow that. We got Lu Diao. That's our strategist on the Ha Shin unit. We got Meng Ao. That's the OG. Moten. Meng Ten. We got Meng Wu. That's Molten's fa father. We got Quang Lei, which is also Kyokai. That's Bay right there in the anime. We got Wang Ben, Olsen's son. Wang Jen, that's Olsen in the anime. Then we got our boy Zang. We got Yo Tanwa, Baby Mama. Then we got the wild cards. Now, for the wild cards, I decided to put Hoken, who's an absolute beast, the demon Hoken. I also decided to put Oki. Now, I know a lot of these characters that I created is probably long gone in the anime. I mean, in the manga now. Not in the anime. But in the manga, they're long gone. And some of them in the anime. But I just created the characters I'm most favorite with. And a bunch of characters I didn't create. Like, for instance, I don't got the Duke. Don't worry about it. It's a bunch of characters I didn't put in this playthrough. But I'm going to add a bunch of more characters and do this again in different scenarios later on. But anyway, then I also added the Queen Mother. She's also a beast character. I made her a beast domestic character. And also we have Rhea Boku. Now these are going to be our four wild cards. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to put them as a part of our force. I might just for this first playthrough. It's going to be mostly 
like a just a refresher of the game for myself and also like a tutorial for new people watching that never played this game before I might just put everybody on my squad for now and I'm just gonna you know I'm gonna add more people as we go along and I might add a bunch of more things as we do other playthroughs then we have you know the, the more lesser characters There's way more of them the main characters and wild cards that I created I only created four wild cards and about 20 something main characters then we have, you know, a bunch of those main characters, the characters directly connected to them in the anime. I created a couple of lieutenants, you know, we got Baji out here, I created, a, you know, Ban Yo, we got a bunch of, and I named these characters after the anime opposed to their original Chinese names, like most of these original characters. I figured since they're going to be playing a major role in this playthrough, I should use their Chinese names opposed to their, like, Japanese names that they switch for the anime it's kind of confusing but anyway and this game was kind of made by japanese people too it's all cool but i'm just saying it was kind of confused when i was trying to put this together then we got you know a couple of other lieutenants now what i did with their stats i only gave them a maximum of about i think about 250 stats so they get about 50 extra points from the base that you get you know 50 in each stat so they get about 50 extra points to spread out i didn't make them beast at all they're just going to be lieutenants now if they level up and they get to, you know minister status or viceroy that's cool with me and i think about five or six of them i just made them totally random let the game do whatever they wanted to do with the character i just named them you know what i mean and you know probably put the affiliation that's about it and that's all i did with the character creation i thought it was kind of interesting because i actually love the kingdom anime so if you never played the kingdom anime i suggest well played the kingdom anime really if you never watched the kingdom anime or read the manga i suggest you do so it's real dope it's loosely based on the war in states era but it's pretty cool just like i was been watching a lot of romance of the three kingdoms lately and I'm looking looking into the novel a lot it's epic man I've been following this, and I like a lot of the Japanese history, too. But, yeah, that's Romance of the Three Kingdoms. That's our character creation. Yeah, man. Next, we're going to get into the main story. We're going to go through the scenarios. Yeah, let me talk about the scenarios real quick. I'm going to briefly go over this before we get into it. Now, they don't really explain this to you. It took a minute for me to understand this. But these scenarios are basically, you can call them difficulty settings. Now, this game has difficulty settings which I can show you in a second, but I would call this the, like, real difficulty setting, because as you can see, if you pay, just pay attention to the dots real quick, to the right-hand side, if you look over, most of the dots on the bottom half of China are white. Those are states that aren't occupied. Now, as you go down these scenarios, more and more of those dots become filled in. Like, for instance, if I start here, I can put the Quinn Dynasty anywhere in these white dots and I can raise a flag, start my city, and start my dynasty from there. Now, I'll explain a lot about that later. But if you go further down the scenarios, as you can see, there's less and less white dots for you to even select. So it, it becomes genuinely harder to establish yourself in this type of world as a ruler because you know i'm playing as a ruler you can easily be an officer under somebody and play that way but as a ruler these are most likely going to be your difficulty settings because for instance if i start in the north surrounded by all of that blue territory i won't be able to expand or do anything i'll be surrounded and swarmed almost immediately and you know it'll be a real short playthrough i'm gonna get into that stuff a little bit later but for now we're just gonna do this we're going to start at the beginning, the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Our difficulty settings are going to be on minimum. And we'll go from there. But thanks for tuning in. That's just a brief run through of the character creation. And just to let people know that I'm doing the Quinn Dynasty. This is going to be like a mesh up between the Warring States era and the Three Kingdoms era. And actually another good point. This game actually has a little Easter egg in it. If you actually beat one of these scenarios, they give you a little Easter egg and you get to name your dynasty. So you actually can name your dynasty, the, the Ken dynasty. And I think that's real epic. I think that's dope. That was real creative of them. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to create my little scenario. And thanks for tuning in.
It's your boy DB4, man. And I'm out.